Uh, hello, everybody. And um, I'm probably the last person to put on if everyone's rushing to go and get some lunch, but I'll try and be as quickly as possible. And also, it's always difficult doing presentations like this when you hear so, 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 so many um, talented people before you. I've, I've kind of rewritten a new presentation here, but because of the, because of the, uh, the, the, the timing, um, the only element I wanted to pick up on my notes from this morning's sessions is that I've noticed that there's architects that build buildings based on products and components that you can buy. And then there's some of you here who are actually product designers. You're, you're creating new products, some of the examples we've had there. I'm very much in the camp of providing um, a team of people to, to help people um, construct things in a very pragmatic, feet-on-the-ground, sensible way. And the business um, that we put together as Fulcro, and, 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 and I didn't set the business up because of Bureau Hapold. Before Bureau Hapold, I, I had the fortune to work all through the 90s in, a, in the largest multidisciplinary company in the UK. If it had registered as an architectural practice, it would have been the largest architectural practice in the UK. And it was IDC, and it was called AMEC Design and Management. And we were in a business where we went to clients like GlaxoSmithKline, and they'd say, there's a space. And as a collective team, we would not only design the building, we would cost it, manage it, and deliver it, and hand it over. It was a full turnkey business. We didn't go outside to anybody. Everything was done in-house. And that's where I learned to use um, 3D tools and the collaborative environment. And then towards the end of the 90s, um, the world kind of fell into this silo-based approach, which people have spoken about today, which I won't go on. In, in, into too much. But in essence, my business is a business which is multidisciplinary. We have architects, engineers, anybody really that wants to construct buildings more efficiently, better, um, and for less for the clients. And I want to talk to you today, if it's okay, um, uh, about construction ready design. I have a passion for just doing it right. And, 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 and um, not that I want to be the Elon Musk of the industry, I haven't got that kind of backing. But I get quite passionate and angry because Fulcro is a bit like an emergency service. We get phone calls from people you wouldn't imagine who have got stuck, who, who are two years late, are half a billion over budget. And we get called to come in and unpick it and work it out. But from that, we've evolved over the last 15 years into a business that um, can actually start from the beginning and help clients uh, realize their dreams. And where I, where I come back from is that 25 years in the industry, um, where I kind of got interested and connected with, with Jeff, with automotive stuff. This was a, an image that um, inspired me to think, why can't we build buildings like this? Um, and the other image that I, I, I hang my hat on is digital prototyping. Um, I've been through it all from single building modeling VDC, and there's some people probably older and wiser than me that can give you lots of, lots of TLAs, three-letter acronyms, and crikey, we've now got FLAs, um, Facilities Management Information Exchange, is a SEND committee to look at information exchange facilities management, and there's lots of other examples I can go into. And the other quick scenario I'll go through quickly is this is another slide I like lots um, about productization and componentization. Right, breathe for a minute. I'm going to say something a bit controversial that I don't like. Our business became more efficient when process was put in, um, and I don't like ineffective processes. So the first process I want to put in the bin is the, um, is the Reba Planner Works. Um, I want to put in the bin this Bizarre thing, BG6 2006. Anybody working on a project that involves mechanical services? Hospitals. How many hospitals are late in the UK and over budget? We've helped 10 out in the last 14 years who are late over budget. And it's because of design responsibilities. It's because of, 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 of lots of contractual issues. So. I'm going to chuck RICS in the bin too, um, uh, and I really want to do that. Um, I, I don't win friends sometimes. Well, no, I fall out with people professionally sometimes, but everybody I work with, we go down to the pub and have a chat about why I want to put these things in the bin. And why I want to put them in the bin, and I'm going to walk over here a bit, is it all sounds great. Risk avoidance for the client, um, risk reduction, risk impact, risk transfer. But the industry has become a bit um, litigious. Um, people have got quite large, and actually, people invert those things. That um, uh, you know, so the handoff between technical design and construction, you know, it, it doesn't. The, 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 the people use the Reba Planner Works actually to say, "I said I'd give you a stage four design, but actually, 
it probably hasn't got all of the detailed ELDs and line diagrams in it to give you a full HVAC system. But if you remember, we had a meeting and the words in this design responsibility matrix and this LOD and this MIDIP and TIDIP, which is all this BIM stuff, actually means I'm only doing an LOD 300 model for you. I'm expecting your contractor to pick that up. You know, it, it gets lost anyway. I can go on. You get it. You get it. And then we get across come projects where it's not until you get to technical design or handover in use do you get people talking about litigious nature. And the other reason I, I feel there needs to be a change is you've heard today there is so much technology and there's such stuff that's capable, you know, so much more we're capable of. And I think some people mentioned earlier on the problem with it is, is the contractual nature. We just had the last, the, uh, Cristiano just talking about, you know, great 3D design but needed to produce the 2D drawings. You know, there are there's still things wrong. Um, Buildings are consistently late over budget, I think, and I'm tainted because most people that come to us historically have been glass half full rather than um, uh, glass half empty. Um, and whichever way you look at that, nobody's going to go home thirsty, but you need to understand where you're approaching these projects and what you're doing. But there is another way to get things done, and this is another diagram which I thought I'd see more of today or recently, and there's lots of variations of this, um, and all I'm really getting at is if we're gonna deliver a better way, we have to understand, I'll move out of the way, have to understand that we have to put more investment. So you could see those bell curves in the middle as where my client needs to spend their money. So I advise clients, actually, if you've got your cost plan and your numbers, you're actually gonna spend more on people like you, people like designers. And actually, let's get some production manufacturing people in here. I mean, there's, um, there's uh, uh, people in here from construction companies responsible for, for um, uh, automating production processes, etc. We all need to work together. But that means I need to put my spend profile there. The other challenge being is if I put my spend profile there and do it properly, then my ability to control costs and manage things is more effective. And my risk pot, the yellow line going up, the cost of change and coordination falls away and I can sleep easier at night, I can have confidence of how I build buildings. But then I have to explain to people about concurrent engineering, simultaneous engineering. Now, anybody in automotive, manufacturing, any other industry understands that, but it, it staggers me, the amount of people I see in the architecture and engineering construction industry that don't understand what that is. And basically, it's linear, it's sequential, so how many projects do we work on where the architect starts and does a drawing? and the mechanical engineer starts later on. And how many projects have I worked on where the architect's finished, but the mechanical engineer's three revisions behind? It, 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 it's, it's just rubbish. We've got to find a different way to do things. So, so we're moving people into this way. But there are barriers to why this doesn't happen. I set my business up 16 years ago. Don't know why you're bothering Ben. Five years time, everyone will be doing this anyway. Uh, I was beta testing Lightwork Design Navis Works in 1996. It hasn't changed much, and we're all still doing the same thing. And now I just get my I get on my high horse again. <laughs> um, BIM managers, BIM technologists. I, I, I don't like it. It doesn't. It, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be there. Uh, I've I've got a client who's spent you know three million pounds plus on modelling, and 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 got all the IRs down and da 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 da. Projects nearing completion, he's got nothing. Projects late, models don't quite fit, data isn't in the models the right way, no one's done anything because they don't understand BS 1192 and PASS. So we've got to get it sim sim simplified all. And some of the barriers we've got, and I'm going back to this diagram here, is we've got to start talking about collaborative working, which hopefully everybody in here wants to do, and I've seen examples of it. More often than not, people talk it, but recognize the left-hand side of this industry. Um, we want to move to this kind of side, and I think a lot of people in your room, in this room, in the presentations we've had, kind of understand this. Um, I'm going to sound really old now. Millennials, there are younger generation coming through that want the right-hand image, uh, not the left-hand image. Um, uh, and then there's processes that we need to put into place. And this is a process that we've put together to explain to people about information Modeling, audit, validation, issuing, etc., and how you're going to get information put together. And what that looks like in the modern day world is people working together. People's roles changed. I don't want an architect to be a lead architect and control the project. 
I want an architect to be part of the team delivering the project with the right goals and understandings um, to deliver projects. Technology is another thing um, which is, is fantastic, but I do worry. I worry about um, Patrick's presentation about level three BIM, and I'll explain why I worry. Um, I worry about the speed of which it's going. I'm worried it's going to break. Take into co cognizance that Fork Row deals with the niche. Um, we deal with high-end clients or, or business owners that have had a problem and don't want that problem again. That's probably 5% you know, of the industry. So, so, so do understand, just give me a bit of, a bit of, a bit of bandwidth to, to be a bit, a bit less lyrical about technology, but I worry about it stretching people. And I worry about it because people talk about BIM and IFCs and there's too many people making an industry out of it. I hope Dasso continue to communicate it that actually this is just business as usual for us and other industries, so why don't you do it? Instead of making career out of being BIM managers or BIM technologists. Um, and, and, the, and I've kind of got this diagram on here that, that there's variants of this diagram as well and I'm not, I'm not a, a, a BIM guru, I, I don't know, an indie BIMer. The original diagram of this that came out, the original one that Mr. Bew and Mr. Phillips put together, um, got ran past me before they even put it into print for BS 1192. And I fell out with them down the pub and said, you silly, you shouldn't mandate it. Because the whole premise of this BIM is a neutral file format. You've got to have a neutral file format and information exchange. We're now, what was it, 20, 2019? It's 2019, isn't it? And we're still in that world where we haven't got that. You know, Ford made it work because they told their supply chain, if you want to build cars, use this software. You know, I can't imagine a single client in our industry doing that to the building industry because the investment isn't there, the money's not there. So technology is a bit iffy. I say on a good day, glass, glass half full, that's where I think the industry is. And I'm, okay, let me clarify that UK industry, that's where we are. Glass half empty, I think actually we're back there. And I use a match. There are many people, some of you, your companies here, probably some people here that I've worked with, they say they do level two BIM. There's a particular structural company that's got it on the bottom of their emails. And they're BIM accredited, and they're level two BIM accredited. Structural model, that's great, thanks very much. So we can get the bills of quantities. No, 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 you can't do that. Well, why not? You, you, you're, you're, you're level two BIM on the bottom of your thing. That's the pr oh, no, 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 can't, can't do that. Or can we use it to give to our manufacturer? Oh, no, 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 because it's just been that, because I've stretched the beam. So in Revit, the graphics has gone, but actually, if you were to do a bill of materials, it will still have the original size on it. That, that's one of the issues. Anyway, so I'm a bit... The other reason is that if you're moving into the world of, of, of level three BIM, you're kind of talking about a digital prototype like this, and getting back to construction-ready design, and the Reba work stages. This is a design that we did. This is a design in stage four, haven't even gone into stage five, that is construction ready. Because we got the client to tell us about the materials and the specification they wanted to. And we knocked months off, months off the program. We're able to give the architects and the instructional engineers information about the detailing of what we're doing. And that is a 3D geometry model. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that's got all the data associated with it because half of you would believe me, half of you would think I'm lying. It hasn't got all the data associated with it with respect to flow and pipe work through it, but every piece of graphical object does know what it, what it is in the respect that I've named it. But it's a bit like, you know, your dog. I've named my dog, he's great, but he looks in the mirror, he doesn't know he's a dog. Yep, so there's n you need some AI and some intelligence with it all. And my diagram is, and this is really a shout out of my vision, this is something we put together seven years ago, or seven, yeah, seven years ago, we built an IFC server, but this is a video that what we're really getting at, and I use this to communicate to clients of ours that want to un understand, there's all this data in this main central hub, if you like, but we have to work out that with design, things get drawn, and, and with drawing, whether it's an object or a swept shape, etc., there's geometry that needs to be grouped together, and then that needs to go into a process to being checked and validated and the design teams do that to still beam a piece of pipe work. There's a process to check and validate it to make sure it's right. And only then can it go into the magic pot. And in that magic pot, shout out to Dasso, let's build this, build this piece of software. It starts building the components for us. 
And uh, you know, I know I've got a clash there. It's just a concept we put together. But that, that's what we're getting at. And that clash is there because I used a graphical engineer from a, from a visualization company. And you know, he didn't understand. So it's just a real life example. But that's the kind of thing we're trying to get to, want to work to. The other barrier to this, and the biggest one in my book, and I've got a chip on my shoulder with draftsmen and coordinators, etc., cetera, um, is that, well, I'll let you read that for a minute. So I, I, I got an issue. People talk about technology silos. Boy, are there people silos. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going in to try and help fix a really, really significant project globally. And I'm not even spoken to by the architect. I won't say who they are, but they are right up themselves. Yeah, they, they, they won't because they just think we're a BIM person. You know, so we've, we're dropped off email chains. We're not included in conversation and it's wrong. And you've seen some examples, I think people have talked about what you do. My, somebody mentioned the Spitfire. So my inspiration, because we're all here for fun and it's a symposium to talk about beyond, my, my enthusiasm has come from these guys. They, 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 uh, they were draftsmen. They understood what they were building and designing, went into college, did, went, went and did, um, you know, they, they knew what they were doing. And they were creators of their own product but had the skills and services to understand. I'm going to bring you all, basically I think most of you are architects, I'll bring you all right back down to earth straight away because I'm going to talk about drainage. All right? And the reason I've chosen drainage is that it's probably the number one factor. If you're building a high-rise tower block or building in, in any, anywhere, internal sanitation and drainage, I c oh, I'd be a millionaire if I, could, if I got, uh, let's say, £100,000 for every time I said to an architect, sorry, you've got to drop your ceiling. Why you got to drop your ceiling? Well, you know that piece of drainage in your toilet stack over at Core 4? you got it coming out over there, and it's got to go like 225 metres, and it's got to have a fall of this and a fall of that. So you've got no choice other than give me another set of toilets somewhere. Can't do that. You have to lower the ceiling. Can't do that. Well, you can't argue with sanitary product. I mean, so you can't argue with drainage. There's nothing else you can do it because SHIT won't run uphill. Yeah. So just, 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 just a bit of fun there. Um, so you've got to have somebody modeling and doing the drawing in the right way. And the other challenge I get is that everybody will go to a client meeting and go, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Bim, yeah, we'll do it. It's not a problem. We love it. They, 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 <laughs> they just won't work differently. Um, and the other bit I want to put in there is to, to gain this a symposium, a bit of education. BIM, all this BIM stuff. Now, I would say Fulcro is the world's best deliverer of BIM. I would say that. I would also say, I went to a, a debate at Cambridge University and I sat on the side of the house. It was a, the question was, is BIM the answer? And I sat on the no side. And I had people shouting at me saying, Ben, you should be over here, you should be over here. And I go, no, 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 I'm not, because it's not the answer. It's just a process and a system. And actually, I want to refer everybody back to the total production system. Methodology of working. It's an old diagram. It's the first one I could find off, off Google. Must be a better one. And the reason it's there is that highly motivated people wrapped around a process which is a common process for delivery. Because there's other conversations we could have. I've had conversations with Patrick and other people in the room about automating production, manufacturing, how I can get my, my design to fabrication and manufacture quickly. And the evidence that I think I'm right, the evidence that I'm right, no, not, no, no I don't think, I am right, <laughs> is, is that the first project that we did as Fulcro uh, couldn't be built because the mechanical services design was in such a state the contractor couldn't put it out to tender. We hoovered it up and we created a 3D digital prototype of all the mechanical services. Not only did we do that and de-risk it for the building, we also came up with the idea that actually you could volumetrically uh, assemble this. And not only did we do that, we said, well, because we've got this 3D model and it's so accurate, and the software we were using used to be owned by a gentleman I brought with me today, was so accurate that we managed to get, this is a bit of an inverse from the previous conversation, we managed to get the ductwork contract and the project to remove 2D drawings for the ductwork HVAC installations. They got a 14% cost saving from the ductwork contractor 
And because we de-risked it all, the the, it's not a massive figure, it's 5.8 million pounds, but we delivered it for under 5 million, the MEP services. With no contra charges, nothing, perfectly successful. Um, the other project that we've looked at to give you a bit of value, um, why is that not going forward? I have to use that. Let me just check. There we go. Is um, again, I'm teaching all of you to suck eggs here, but that's that's trade packages. Okay, so any of you architects that don't get involved in construction, they're generally the summary of the trade you need to build an apartment. Generally, 13-week apartment fit-out phase, you've got 36 apartments, da, 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 add it all up, construction costs, blah, blah, blah. It needed to be done quicker. I said, hey, if you were to digitally prototype it and model it and get everybody around the room, you could probably work out in a nice warm office environment how you can get that down from 13 weeks to, to nine weeks. And when I mean by digitally prototyping it, I mean properly drawing it. And now, this isn't a visualization from a CAD package that does visualization. This is from the authoring CAD tools that were used for the installation, documentation, and drawings. And these are the visualizations that came out of it. And we managed to get it from 13 weeks down to nine. Didn't get the seven, we got it to nine. Another example being, this is an example of how you have, uh, have draftsmen or coordinators or engineers, engineers, designers, creating digital prototypes that aren't one-offs. They're actually part of the process to deliver the building and this is, a, this, is a, this is a snapshot of the building. Now, these aren't projects that we've got involved with at inception. They're projects we've got involved with to help speed up and fix. But the, 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 the value of bringing information together and coordinating it is, 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 is insurmountable. I'm only flying through these because I'm hungry, and I'm sure you are as well. This is a project. This is a project for um, a London client, very near Harrods. Um, we are six months ahead of schedule on the MEP services because the client decided to embed us into the design team. Because of the designers didn't have this capability to deliver um, the level of coordination, no, the level of product required, we got involved and we've speeded the whole process up that we're nearly down to all the construction documentations complete, validated, verified, and they're not actually going to be installing any of these services or doing anything till. March next year, head of service. This is a digital prototype of a visualization. Uh, this is another example of, um, of, a, of digital prototyping. Um, I can talk to anybody at lunchtime if they want to know more about how you deal with these things. Uh, drum roll, this was done in Archicad. Um, Archicad's brilliant. I think it's better than Revit. Most of our work's done in Revit because that's the predominantly the currency that's being used in the UK construction industry for delivering detail. We do interface with um, uh, Dassault products and systems. We do interface with architects who are delivering other software products. Um, so we get that across to people. And then what we do is we validate and verify the design. So we can create digital prototypes. And the unique thing about our business is that we can do all these models with services and structure in. But the unique thing about Fulcro is we're not just a design company or a modeling company. We take PI for what we produce. We're so confident about what we do. We can do it. So yes, we'll do your mechanical services, your structural drawings, and I will PI it. The geometry is going to be correct. You can build it. You can fabricate from it. You can get it wrong. And if there's a problem, we'll give you money back. And it's, it's surprising me that any mechanical services consultants in the room, or if you know any, ask them how many do installation drawings. How many will certify that their invert level, their sizes, their pipe works are fit for construction? You'd have a very, very short list. Um, uh, go back to here. And then what we do is we validate and verify. So one of a, a, a little bit of a conversation is that our mantra is, is um, uh, I might use a new one, how. You mentioned how, how you get things done. We like to show people how we get things done. And how we show people is we get them inside our collaborative environment. I don't like calling it a BIM cave because then people think of visualizations and other, other, other products on the market. It, it, it's a facility where we've called it the full max. It loads up one-to-one -one geometry models that you can walk around and validate and communicate. You can see people's eyes. We've done HoloLens developments, Daiquiri helmets, all that kind of stuff. But I can't honestly look 
you in the eye and tell you I've done the job properly, it's coordinated, it's going to be fitted, and you can see my eyes and I'm telling you the truth. If I was to say all that and you couldn't see my eyes, you wouldn't know. Collaboration's about peop speaking to people, seeing, each, seeing people. And what I've got, I think, is just... Simultaneously uh, view and discuss the project in detail. Assembled in less than three hours and user training taking just 12 minutes, the full Max Cube can be up and running for a design review in less than half a day. Access BIM data live while in the virtual environment, enabling teams to interact with graphical and non-graphical information to make better decisions, resulting in better decisions. There you go, I'll cut it off there. You get the gist um, um, of, of what we do. And the examples of success are, I'll stand back a bit for this one. This is, this is a teenage cancer treatment centre. We got asked to get involved to sort out the services, the mechanical services across the whole thing. Not only did we create a digital prototype of the services, we did all of the setting out for the dry lining, or the stud partitioning and the walls, all the IPS panels, all the access out, we did all the RCP, all the access panels in the RCP ceilings, and the geometry was so accurate, we certified that you could go and install it from a Trinable Total Station. So all of the 10 mil drop rods used to bracket the services were all set out from our geometry. Uh, I think there's somebody from Shop Architects in the room, is there? If there are, stand up or put your hand up. If not, remain ominous. In fact, there isn't, perhaps there is. What I was going to say is, good working with you. <laughs> we worked on this project, which is, um, it had a bad start to the, the, to, to the world. Um, it, uh, the original contractors fell out with the client, didn't go very well. They're trying to build it. It's a 34-storey, it's a including the or 32, but it's 34 if you take the plant areas. It's 95% manufactured, fabricated off-site. I believe it's the largest volumetric modular building in the world. It's got no concrete cores. Uh, it had um, no external scaffolding. It was designed structurally by Arabs and shot to the, in America to that standard that there's the design, now go away and build it. They chucked it over the fence to a bunch of people to try and build it. And guess what? They tried to build it traditionally. You know, you're halfway through building your modules and construction, and some QS comes along and says he's found some cheaper pipe work. You know, it didn't work. It all stopped, and then we got asked to come back. And when we came back, we did what everybody has kind of seen some examples of. We created a digital prototype. We coordinated it. We got it right. We got the manufacturing in place, and we managed to build the building. The building's now occupied. The building's now in use. And I still believe it's the, um, it, it's the most complete volumetric modular building. Um, as I said, no, no concrete cores, no cores, no um, external scaffolding, 90% off-site. The other example, looking at the clock, well, the clock is that right or wrong? That's wrong. Yeah. The, 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 the other example is a small project. This is a project where we were the lead architects. We were the lead designer. Uh, we were the project manager. Um, we managed the costs, and it was a project that was delivered for Dudley, and it was delivered through a framework, um, an IPI contract. Um, uh, I don't know, again, I'm gonna sound really, this is, this is gonna be the worst thing I've ever said in a presentation. Uh, anybody seen DIY SOS on the TV? <laughs> it's, a pro, it's, a pro, it's a program where, they, on, anyone got hands up there? Yeah, one or two, none, none? I don't believe it. Anyway, it's a project where, I don't believe any of you, um, now they go in and they fix people's houses up and all these tradesmen come and they do it. And it's fantastically successful, partly because you get a chance to be on TV, but no one's allowed to advertise themselves. But it works because there's no commercial. Everyone's there because they want to do it. So the IPI contract is a collaborative contract, integrated project insurance, which works on a framework where there's a project bank account, you're all there as team members and you work collaboratively to get the job done. Um, and cut a long story short, uh, there was a 6.5% saving on what we as a team decided the building. So we all get together. We said to Dudley College that we'll build the building for you, you know, for 11.65 million. We all work together collaboratively to deliver it. We all get paid our money. It's all pre p so there's no this shitty, well, I mean, it's all there. No payment applications. You just get paid for what you do. Everything's fine. Um, but if there's a saving, you know, you all benefit from it. We all got a share of that saving. It's fantastic. And we're just going into, in fact, there was a meeting yesterday where they're trying to get funding to build, to build another one. And we won, you know, the, the, the project itself won um, 
some awards, uh, Construction Excellence Award and a local construction, re regional construction excellence award. I kind of flown through that. I might have flown through that too quickly, but is that okay? Yeah, do you want me to carry on? All right, I've got one more slide. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and, and the bit that the last slide I, I just I just put on quickly um, as I was sitting over there watching everybody, and we had that um, unfortunate delay with the sound. I had a chance to put another slide on, and this slide I've put up there is that that what I've also worked out, and I've thought about it a lot, but it crystallised today, is that BIM is a bit like religion. Step back again, right? BIM is a bit like religion. I can believe. Some people might believe there's a God, and you might get 20 people agreeing there's a God, but they might worship in a different way. There's a different flavor to it. Building information modeling really depends where you're coming from and what you want out of it. You know, and, and, and just bear that in mind. It means different things to different people. So I'm really pleased that what I'm seeing in the marketplace is that people are beginning to drop it off conversation. I believe BIM's just beginning to be pushed away into, it's just another process, let's just try and do do it proper. Um, is that okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, yeah, well, all I, all I can make up on the spot, with all honesty, <laughs> is integrated product delivery I know of, and it's a process for delivering the projects, and it works well. IPI, it was one of three frameworks. So when everybody came up with this, let's change the construction industry in the UK, there were three models of delivery that the UK government proposed. One of the models was IPI. Um, uh, I'm not sure IPD has got a contract and a framework around it. That's the difference. So IPI has got a specific contract you can print off and use and a process to, to apply to a project to deliver. And that project actually should follow you know, an IPD type process. So yeah, so it's different in that way. Absolutely. So within the IPI, you, you're all board members effectively for the project. Interestingly, you can vote each other off. So if you're fed up with the structural engineer or the mechanical engineer, you know, or the drainage engineer, whatever, you can actually say, that, look, this isn't working. There's actually a contractual process to remove them and replace them. You know, you're, you're trying to get that process through. But certainly there is that framework, monthly board meetings, progress to how you get it done. Yeah. Any other questions or you want lunch? <laughs>